Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live Questions. I am your host, Bill Harris. As our regular viewers already know, this program is dedicated to providing biblical insights to your questions about life. We have a cadre of local ministers that we call on to view your questions and come up with scriptural truths to answer them. And I want you to meet this panel today. First up, we have Pastor, uh, Senior Pastor Tim Benjamin of the Wayne Street United Methodist Church in St. Mary's, followed by um, his intern at the uh, church, the same church there, Parker Miley. And we welcome you, your first time being with us. Uh, yes, I am. You'll soon be called pastor, I guess, as soon as you <laughs> finish school. I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we have Pastor uh, Tim White, Lima First Missionary Church. He's the senior pastor there. Rounding off our panel is Pastor Brad Taylor of Lima Community Church, where he is the executive pastor. We're happy to have you all with us today. Thank you, Thank Bill. You. All right. Thank you know, what, um, one of the questions that we got in from viewers, simply put, how do we confirm the Bible's reliability historically and theologically? Uh, I don't know if this is a viewer that's having trouble explaining that to others, but uh, how do we how do we say the Bible? How do we know the well, Bible? I, I think one of the things that that's interesting about the Bible is is as a document as old as it is, uh, how, how many other documents, how many other teachings, how many many other anything from that long ago are we still getting any truth out of? I mean, we, we can study things and we can learn things and obviously some theology and philosophy, but there's just very, very few things that we would say are, are life altering and, and we're still looking to for inspiration and things like that. We read many of those things as history. We don't read much of that as inspiration like we see the Bible from. So it's still the test of, you know, 1500 years. If you go back to the time it was compiled mm -hmm. into the form we have it now, uh, that's a pretty good track record. I don't know if many other things could even come close. So Very good. Yeah. it's actually a two part question, mm -hmm. uh, confirming the reliability historically and then theologically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and historically, you know, 1947, I think the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, really was able to open up the minds of those skeptics who thought that those Old Testament verses were outdated. And so when they compared from ancient literature, they saw that the, the, compar the comparison was there. And uh, not only that, but uh, there was a statement made by the Smithsonian Institute's uh, Department of Anthropology. Listen to this statement. The, the, this, uh, they've, they've been around for years and years. The historical books of the Old Testament are as accurate historical documents as any that we have ever seen and are in fact more accurate than many of the Egyptian, Mesopotamian, or Greek histories. These biblical records can be and are used as are other ancient documents in archaeological work. What does that mean? Well, it means really not only does archaeology confirm that the Bible is historically accurate, but professional archaeologists actually use the Bible in many of their, in much of their work, in much of their studies. Mm -hmm. So historically, uh, we, can, we can look at some of those things and we can see the accuracies there. Theologically, uh, then you've got to test the authors. You want to test uh, the text and the translations when you look at that theologically. Mm -hmm. the, the apostles uh, said what they meant. They meant what they said. They were eyewitnesses to everything. Uh, it was very clear that they were inspired by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that the Holy Spirit would uh, actually be the author through them. And so we can take faith in the reliability in, uh, in, the, in the authorship. The text, the text is there. As far as the translations, you know, we're, that's a whole nother segment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whole nother show. Uh, a whole, a whole nother show. <laughs> but, but the, the translations uh, down through the ages have uh, the similarity mm -hmm. in the text from English to Hebrew to Greek. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very, very uh, comparable. Very good. All right. What do you say? Pastor Tim, I, I appreciate the, especially what you identified in terms of uh, both Pastor Tim's actually, just in terms of the of the historical um, work that has been done, and there's been a lot of it. There's a significant amount of historical work, and I'm I'm very interested, as you touched on there at the end, more in the theological question, the sure. the question about what does the Bible, what does it actually mean to us? It's one thing to say that it's an accurate historical document, but to say that it is um, that it is what it purports to be is another thing altogether. And I, I think you raise a great point that. Um, 
it, we believe that it is the inspired word of God, that the Holy Spirit inspired the writing. Um, I think one of the things that is fascinating for me about the Bible is that it was written so many years ago by so many different authors for so many different purposes to so many different audiences. And we, um, we ought to ask those questions as we read it today. We ought to ask the questions about what was happening in, uh, you know, in Israel as this was being written and what were the reasons that it was being written. And um, another, another thought about the, um, the theological accuracy of the Bible is just the reality that Jesus was the living word. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we have, what we have is the word of God that I believe is the living word. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, as we, as somebody who's read the Bible uh, uh, devotionally for many, many years and c- can read the same passage and get something new from yes. it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we yes. all experience mm-hmm. that, yes. right? Um, just that understanding that it is like a river, that, that uh, the water is always new when you come to the Bible, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, a college professor of mine used that um, metaphor, and I think it's so helpful. But yeah, just the uh, it, it's clear that Jesus is still speaking through his living word. Amen. And that to me is a great theological uh, defense for yeah. the accuracy of the Bible. Amen. Parker, let's see if we You know, I, I agree with yeah. everyone, every, I'm being the last of the group, but um, I agree with what everyone has said thus far. Um, the fact that the Bible is um, world known. I mean, you can go to mm-hmm. the most secular of secular communities and you can say, you know, and they will know uh, this, of this book and, mm-hmm. and kind of what that, maybe not all the details of it, but know that it is ex- in existence mm-hmm. out there and that there's some meaning to it. And that um, I find so interesting is, and, and I think with some of that and, and, and the prophecies fulfilled in the Bible and in the book and everything else are all kind of proofs that this book has a um, serious power compared to anything else. Yes. And I think that is what um, all I need to kind of understand that this is not like any other textbook or any other history book. It has, um, it is, it's, it's the living word. Yeah, and, 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 and that's proven by how it inspires, has inspired people and continues to inspire people to go forward and do great things. Uh, even like the martyrs and things like that, people who died for what they believed, and that was their basis was the Bible. Yeah. And yeah, uh, right. you know, I don't know of any other book that would move that many people mm-hmm. to make that kind of commitment. Right. So to me, that's right. the power of the Holy Spirit, as you guys said, uh, working through it. What an yeah. amazing document. So <laughs> Parker, I want to just touch on something that you mentioned there that I think is so important. And that is that the Bible is not like a history book. It's not like a textbook. Uh, I actually preached a couple weeks ago and I tried to do some, um, some sort of uh, hermeneutical work in the early stages of the sermon to help people understand that the Bible is more like a library than a book and it's full of different types of literature and that we ought to read it that way, that we ought not to read uh, something that is written poetically as we would a history textbook mm-hmm. or something that's clearly trying to communicate a narrative about the life of Jesus as we would a uh, personal letter, which we have a lot oh, of sure. in the Bible, sure. right? Yeah. And so I think that's just an important um, insight and I, I appreciate you bringing that yeah. up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I guess you could sum it up by saying that the Bible has shelf life. I mean, you've heard that term yeah. before, yeah. but all yeah. the other books are like there else, on the yeah. shelf, but they yeah. don't have that life. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's life. That's good. I like Bible. to refer to it as uh, God's love letter to his children. Yeah. And, in, and indeed it is. It is, yeah. it is full of life, whereas other books are not. It is, it is inspired. It is God breathed. Yeah, it is the Word. Yeah. In the beginning was the Word. And the yeah. Word was with God. Was with, and the and word, word was God. God. Right. How about the power? It's yes. in the Word of God. That's yes. what I love. I love yeah. that. Uh, yeah. the, the fact that um, it, is, it is so old and, is, and has been studied by people throughout their entire lives. Yeah. Uh, there's been many people who dedicated their entire lives to learning about this book, and they will never grasp it all. Right. You know, right. it, it has so much, so much power, yes. so much mystery, so much wisdom to it. It's, um, it is just, that, that's what blows me away when I sit down and I actually try to read it, and I had to accept the fact that. I will never be able to truly understand the whole story. <laughs> I, I, my, my brain will not ever be able to grasp that entire, um, yeah. the work of God. Yeah. And that we don't understand so it by our intellect. As you can, uh, educational books, this book is to be understood uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit Same. and Same. Uh, the commentary. Yes. I always say the Bible is the best commentary on the Bible. Yes. <laughs> and it really is. Uh, the Holy Spirit is yeah. the one really giving us in our spirit uh, the interpretation of Scripture. Uh-huh. And there's literally no other book you can say that about. No, no book. Yeah, that's yeah. True. No book. Okay, that's true. Parker, you, what you said about the 
however many years you study it, mm -hmm. you'll never reach the depth mm -hmm. of it. Yes. So one of my very favorite passages of scripture is the prayer that Paul prays in oh, Ephesians yes. 3. And this is what it says. It says that, uh, you know, he prays that the Ephesians will know how high and how long and how wide and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, which is a paradox, right? It's, it's a hard thing for us to understand. But this is what you're saying is that no matter how long we journey, yeah. there will be a new depth of truth and understanding and love and mercy to find. Yes. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And that, that verse you just quoted there, I, I say it out loud. I say it every day. And in saying it, out, you know, the Bible is meant to be read out mm -hmm. loud and it, it just gets down in you when you do that. And to think that when you continue to do that, it not only gives you a, a mindset, but it gets in your spirit. And of course, the spirit is trying to direct you God's way anyhow. Uh, your, your spirit is listening to the Holy Spirit to be directed. And uh, that's powerful in terms of the relationship that we have with the Lord because, you know, you have to, you have to be in the spirit to hook up with the Lord, you know. Just to hook up with him, you got to get in the spirit. You can't yeah, do it yeah. in the natural. No, no, you can't. So, He's a spirit. There's so much to say. I mean, you all have said you've covered so much and still... I could bring in another group of ministers and ask them <laughs> yes. the same question, yeah. and they would take it to the next yeah. level. Yeah, you get a lot more. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Unsearchable riches, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And you can dig and you can dig and never reach the bottom. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we, we, we have literally proven that to be true. Yes. <laughs> right, right here. Yeah, right here. Right 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 yeah. yeah. But they, they yeah. tell you if you're in a hole, stop digging. But when it comes to the Word of God, you can't help yourself. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's, let's move on. I, I think we've exhausted that one. Uh, oh, how about <laughs> um, here? Let's see. Oh, um, how does free will affect my faith? Mm. That's from another view that has written into us. Mm. How, oh, you know, I'm just getting a sign here that we need to take a break. Right. We're so caught up in this. <laughs> yeah, we got to take a break. We're going to hold that question for just a few more minutes, a few minutes, and uh, we'll be right back. So don't don't go away. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We are back with our distinguished panel for a continued discussion on Bible truths. Our next question, gentlemen, is um, how does free will affect my faith? That's what the viewer writes. How does free will affect my faith? I think, uh, I think free will is, is, I mean, it could be a lot of things. Obviously, it's free will, so you can define it any way you want. But I think <laughs> the important thing to keep in mind when it comes to faith is free will is our opportunity to demonstrate that faith. You know, mm -hmm. since we're not required, you know, God didn't create us to be robots. You know, we, he doesn't have a handle on us. He kind of leads us around. Mm -hmm. since, since we have the chance to choose, that free will gives us the opportunity to demonstrate our faith. We can now show our faith. So when you see somebody doing something good, you know, helping in a soup kitchen or helping their neighbor or anything like that, whenever you see something like that happening, you don't in your mind say, well, God's forcing them to do that. You say, because that person knows Jesus, they are responding in that way. That's mm -hmm. what free will allows us to do. It gives us a, a canvas to make that faith painting upon. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, that free will can also make you demonstrate a lot of other stuff. <laughs> Probably not as good. Yeah. But I think the relationship between free will and faith is, free will is, is our opportunity to demonstrate that faith for the world and help the world see that faith makes a difference because I don't have mm -hmm. to do this because I believe. I am inspired to do this because I believe. Right. And then, and then that, those, good, those good deeds we do through our free will, since we know it's not uh, something that's mandated, uh, becomes a demonstration, and, and the world is changed by that. People are changed. You know, if I, if, I, if I force somebody to do something, the people who receive that are like, well, Tim made him do it, you know? <laughs> so if, if, if we thought it was God behind me shoving me into every situation, you know, that wouldn't be as meaningful. But because I have the ability to choose, and because of what I believe about Jesus, I'm now inspired to go forward and reach out a helping hand to you, to me, I find that much more meaningful. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a demonstration. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know if, if, you know, what you described there, Pastor Tim, is a, is a generally Wesleyan perspective of free will. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I guess it'd be curious to know if, 
if we all kind of come from that stream mm -hmm. here at the table. So. Yeah. Well, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yes, I do. as do yeah, I. If you're asking uh, me, yes, uh, from but a, I do and, know that there are yes, other yeah. beliefs out there. Absolutely. And Christian Orthodoxy, they believe God is in, uh, he's completely in charge of everything, and there's right. nothing that man really has to do. And even, even when it comes to faith, that really we don't exercise faith, God chooses us for salvation. So that, that's Christian Orthodoxy. But uh, I, I, I don't believe that. Right. Uh, necessarily. <laughs> I, I believe, yes, no, I, I believe God is in charge, Isaiah. Uh, chapter 46 tells us that God is in charge of everything. I'm God, there's no other. He says, uh, there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. He is in charge of everything. However, people have to answer for their choices and their actions. Galatians 6, 7, for whatever one sows, that shall he also reap. It's pretty clear that we, we have choices to make and we there are uh, consequences to each choice. Would you say that uh, how God dealt with Adam and Eve both before and after the fall also demonstrates the same thing? Mm -hmm. Sure. The very fact that they uh, engaged and they, they obeyed the suggestion of, the, of Satan mm -hmm. uh, indicates that there was a, an act of free will that had right. been involved there. Right. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think one of the things that um, that I love about the Wesleyan perspective is the role of, of what, what we call prevenient grace. And I'm sure that, that all of you are familiar with prevenient grace, but- You better, you better break that down. I'd love to, I'd love to. <laughs> you want to package that? It, yeah, it's really- You it, mentioned and, it for a reason. That's Bill. right, that's right, yes. Yeah, I thought you'd never ask. Uh, you know, I, I, um, the, the word, you know, you could break it down pretty easily and it just means the, the grace that comes before. And the idea is that the grace of God is at work in us, is prompting us and inviting us and wooing us into relationship with him, even before we've engaged in that relationship. And I believe that most uh, followers of Jesus, regardless of their theological stream, believe in prevenient grace because I've never spoken to a follower of Jesus who doesn't pray for people who don't know the Lord yet. Mm -hmm. I've, never, I've never encountered that. Right. And point. when you are praying for people who don't know the Lord, what you are praying is that the Spirit of God would go to that person and invite them, yes. convict them, uh, you know, yeah, woo, yeah exactly, woo yeah. them into that relationship. And that, that to me is a very, um, it's a beautiful piece of free will that even in the midst of our free will, the Spirit of God is prompting us and is, is at work to lead us to do what is right if we will be obedient to that yes. Spirit. Free will allows us to access God's will here on earth. You know, we have the, um, we, like Tim mentioned, the option. Like we all have yeah. options. And um, that, that free will aspect of our faith, it means, well, I can, do, I can do one thing. And he used examples of working in a soup kitchen and everything else. But in life, we, we face, um, it's almost as if we're at a million different crossroads yeah. at one time. And, you know, there's, there's something to each one of those and there's a side effect to each one of those. And, and that's why I'm talking about going in and reading God's word, knowing what God's will is, is what allows you to have a um, much more um, effective free will aspect in life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I like the word free in that because people that are, that are not freed in Christ, they're in bondage and they're living out the program that, that Satan has planned for them. And for some people that leads to drugs, alcohol, you know, uh, per, perverse sex, all those kinds of things. You the know? reason we're seeing the world in the mess that it's in today <laughs> collectively speaking, mm -hmm. yeah, is yeah. because we indeed have free will. <laughs> right. yes. you can, that's right. pretty evidential yeah, yeah, right yes. there that we yeah. have free will. Yeah. And it's a shame that's that we've done that with it though. I well, agree with you 100%. Uh, no, no, I agree. Yeah. Yes. And I know you do too, yes. but yes. I, just, I, I feel like we could have done so much better if we allowed faith and free will to go closer together than what yeah. they did. That no, we no, actually lived right. out what that's we claim to believe. Pastor, yeah. That's yeah. You know, the, the, um, the line from the Lord's Prayer is, is what comes to mind that, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Yeah. And we would all agree that as we look at the condition of the world, yeah. this is not God's will. Mm -hmm. the, the condition of the world is not what God would desire, but we are kingdom bringers, yeah. right? Yeah. We have the opportunity yes. to help his kingdom come on earth. And that's part of our yes. free will. And I'm looking for the answer to that prayer. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, it's yes. coming. Yes. yes. The answer right. to that is yeah. coming. Right. And we're going to see his kingdom right. indeed yeah. come. Right. Yeah. While we're still on that subject of faith, uh, two, two more questions that came in. I guess this is from two separate viewers, but we'll tie them together. Faith is supernatural. What does this statement mean? And then the other part of that, is faith enough to save us? Mm -hmm. Think about it. First one again is, 
Faith is supernatural. What does that statement mean? And is faith enough to save us? Yeah. How sayest thou, Jim? Uh, Tim, you gave a great uh, explanation between uh, the natural and, and supernatural. Right. Uh, why don't you repeat that again? That was good. Well, was. faith is, uh, you know, the statement, faith is supernatural. What does that mean? First of all, not all faith is supernatural. Mm -hmm. We have natural faith or two types of faith. Natural mm -hmm. faith, which allowed us today to be able to sit in these chairs mm -hmm. without thinking about it because we had a certain degree of faith that they're going to hold us. So there is natural faith. And then there's that supernatural faith. And that supernatural faith is how a person's belief or how their faith in something can encourage them to believe in the impossible, in things mm -hmm. that are transcend our abilities. Right. So right. our uh, senses. Uh, our senses. Right. Right. Uh, so faith is, uh, the fact that faith is supernatural, faith can be supernatural. It can also mm -hmm. be natural. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very well. Yeah. And, and I, th I think that, that, that the, the, the question that came in is, is obviously the natural faith. I think we all understand is, is the supernatural portion of it. I think a lot of people would love to see the Red Sea part or they would love to see, uh, you know, <laughs> five loaves and two fish feed 5,000 people. We would love to see those things. I'd like to walk on the water. Yeah, walk on the water would be pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, we to a winner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we would all love to see those things. But we, we don't understand that faith, faith is about more than just those big moments, you know. And, and sometimes, sometimes faith will bring something amazing that, that blows our mind, yeah. but not always. Yeah. And, but, but it's still there. And it's about believing in something greater than ourselves and knowing that we are heading towards something greater than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's, what, that's what faith is moving us toward. Yes. yes. Yeah, t Tim, Tim said it very um, well, well said. But um, <laughs> the fact that, you know, our God is obviously um, works in, in supernatural mm -hmm. ways. And I think that's what we're trying to define here. The fact that we won't understand how it all happens. And that's, that's the part of the faith that makes right. it a faith, you know. Because right, we can't explain the, fact, the whole thing. Yes, we Absolutely. cannot explain mm -hmm. the whole story. We cannot explain how mm -hmm. God may allow um, Peter to walk on the water as well. We, we won't understand that. But it's the faith that is relying in what God can do. And, and, that, and now I'm seeing Jesus with ice powers. Turn the water into ice. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had never thought of that before. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, this next question here that came from viewers. Um, in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. why would God kill Lot's wife by turning her into a pillar of salt for simply looking in the wrong direction? So, Bill, this, this question is, in many ways, I think it's the most challenging question on the sheet that we got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, it's, the reason for that is because it's asking a question about God's character. And I think at a, a table with some guys that have some years under our belt, it would just make sense for Parker uh, to take this one, don't you? <laughs> don't you think? I'm in. Yes, I'm in. I would say too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Parker, you just been hand. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess. Go, go so, get him, yeah. All right. I guess I'll give a, my, my take on that. Is um, um, Lot's wife? You know, they were told, you know, don't look back, and um, and Lot's wife, you know, looked back. And in, in that e expression there, I believe it was. Lot's wife wanted that, that sinful life that was of Sodom and Gomorrah, that, 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 um, that attitude and that mindset, rather than what God had planned for her. You know, we, we often hear yeah. the straight and narrow path. And um, I don't believe Lot's wife was willing to follow that straight and narrow path. I mean, again, we all fall off it sometimes, and that's mm -hmm. where we kind of get into um, some trouble deci deciding what this is. Sure. But um, Lot's wife turned around, mm -hmm. and, and she, she said to God pretty much, eh. and, and, and you can take that in a different way. I mean, that's not written in Scripture, but it's all an interpretation of yeah, what we're trying to sure. see the yeah, story as. Well, I'm thinking about the New Testament Scripture that says that he who looks back is not fit for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yeah. that Scripture? Well, I mean, the, one of the big uh, pieces of, of salvation is talking about repentance. Well, that repentance is actually turning away that's from the right. sin. So that's she did right. literally the opposite of yeah. that, mm -hmm. yeah. turn back toward. And I think what that proves, and, and as Parker said, is, is the corrosive and dangerous nature of sin. God didn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because he was angry at them or, or wanted to just wipe them out. He was trying to eradicate the sin that was there. By her looking back, she was still there. You know, she, her, like you said, her feet may have been leaving, but her, her heart was still <laughs> That's there. Right. That's right. And I give you credit for that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the idea is, is when she looked back, that sin was leaving with her and God said, we can't have that. Yeah. We're try this is what we're trying to get rid Whatever was going on there that was bad, we're trying to get rid of that. And uh, she was a part of that. So that's why, why she had to go too. And that's why she looked back. 
Right. Yeah. Their heart yeah. was still there. It was still there. And, and, so it was yeah. about, it was not, not necessarily about punishing. It was not necessarily about God flexing the muscles or wanting to burn something up. It was about that sin has to go. Right. All of it. There, there's an interesting, I just happen to think, there's an interesting in, in, in the Jewish exegesis of this. Mm -hmm. I, I happen to think um, bringing that in, uh, there was a rabbi, I believe it was Lichtenstein, who said that God told them not to look back. Go and don't look back because he himself was, going, was coming down hmm. in a cloud. He was going to face all of those who had thumbed their nose at the holy almighty God. And he himself was coming down and no man or woman could look upon God and live. And so don't look back whatever you do. And, oh, wow. and, and so that, yeah. that's just, I want to throw that in. That's, that's, a, yeah. bon that's yeah. a bonus. Yeah. There you, that's right, <laughs> yeah. bonus material. Yeah, that is yeah. But, uh, yeah it's great, it's yeah. great. You know, so she actually I, saw God when she turned around. So yes, which should, and yeah. shouldn't have because she was unworthy. Right. Wow, yeah. that, I never. And, well, that goes right back to the question of the supernatural faith. If you yeah. see God, then you know you know there's obviously yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, if you see there. God yeah, and, and, and uh, turn to salt, then it probably didn't work out. Longer faith. Yeah. yeah, it's no longer faith. Yeah. Yeah. You have or, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you turn to salt, you probably did it wrong. It didn't work out. Yeah, you know, obviously, Parker, we we you know, discuss this question and knew that you had what I think we all agree mm -hmm. is a really yeah, great a position on that. And you really have handled that well. You have a mature um, view of that. I yeah. think that, um, you know, the, the question, it, to go back a little bit to the questions about the Bible, I think one of the questions that we ought to be asking about the Bible is what is the purpose of this trying to communicate? And uh, this is clearly teaching us something about God's character. And I think what it's teaching is that God in so many cases in the Old Testament is trying to protect the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is all the things the that you is, all said yeah, are true. Mm -hmm. You know, where her heart was that she desired, desired to continue in that lifestyle. So I think it's teaching us something about God's character that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Good. We've got a little time left, but let's try to explore another area. Um, Bill, you had oh, asked us earlier, is oh, faith enough to save us? Oh, that's what we hadn't yeah. done to that problem. Yeah. We've got about a minute and a half left. Oh, well. <laughs> go, go that's for plenty it. of time. That's, that's, 90 90 seconds. Seconds. Yeah. that's a question for an executive pastor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, the, the answer is going to depend on whether you are coming from the, uh, whether you're aligning yourself with Catholicism, with Orthodoxy, or with Protestantism, mm -hmm. because there's difference, you know, is that uh, in, in Catholicism, the sacraments have to be added uh, in order for you to be saved, uh, you know, quote unquote saved. Uh, in Orthodoxy, you can't do a thing. God selects you and that's it. There's no free will. There's no nothing. And, and the way I believe and us at, here at the table, from what I gather, uh, is that uh, faith is enough to save us. It's God's grace, like you were indicated, right. grace first. Gra the measure of grace has been dispensed. Uh, we are living in that dispensation of grace now, thank God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. grace has been dispensed. Us meeting that with our faith, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely yeah. Um, produces the salvation in our life. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're ended right on time. And, uh, <laughs> we're out of time right now. Great. This same panel will be back with us next week. So we'd like you to join us again at that time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>